this is this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back, and what a weekend of boxing we had. Sorry about that. Uh, what a weekend of boxing we had. Um, shout out to uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, a couple San Antonio fighters. Um, I always have to pick up my Texas fighters. Uh, Eddie Ortiz got a very uh, impressive decision victory. And uh, how about Biggie Robert Rodriguez? My boy, uh, second time on top ranks um, in his top ranks bubble on ESPN and his second vicious knockout. Uh, this one a body shot um, that basically ended the night. His second uh, undefeated opponent that he's knocked out in basically two months. Uh, if you haven't seen him yet, Robert Biggie Rodriguez and Eddie the Hunter Ortiz, both from San Antonio, Texas, uh, two future world champions um, that will add belts. Um, to the already growing stable. Josh Franco has a belt. Mario Barros has a belt. Uh, but these are two more San Antonio Alamo City fighters to watch. Um, but let's <clears throat> let's get into the uh, the, the vicious knockouts because they were two absolutely brutal knockouts this weekend. Um, one in the heavyweight division, Pavekin, which people didn't see coming. And then in the Joe Smith-Alvarez uh, fight, people were – I picked Joe Smith, so I'm going to do some bragging today. Um, if anyone watched MCR podcast um, with me and my co-host, Matt Hunter, um, I said that Joe Smith would win. He picked Alvarez. And I said that Pavekin could win. Now, I didn't pick Pavekin, so I wasn't right about that. But I said it certainly was possible Pavekin could drop and end the night with one shot um, and, and beat uh, Dillian White. And I was absolutely right about that, although my official prediction was wrong. So uh, I'll take an L on the prediction. Um, but I'll, I'll take the uh, W on the possibility that I said that Povetkin could certainly win this fight with one shot because, like I said, White, White is offensively flawed. Um, and then the Joe Smith fight was just uh, – that was a one-sided beatdown. He, if 2020 ended right now, Joe Smith Jr. would be fighter of the year. Think about that, right? He's got two dominant performances over Jesse Hart and Alvarez. That's two top 10 175 pounds. It's a really good 175-pound division. Now, where does he rank? We'll, we'll get into that. But let's start with Povetkin. The heavyweight fight, the final chapter at Eddie Hearn's house. Um, really, really impressive stuff by Alexander Povetkin. Well, not really. One really impressive uppercut. Um, Dillian White looked to be in complete control. Uh, he had won the first two rounds. Um with his, with his, just, just off his jab, just off his jab and blocking Povetkin's return fire. And I was like, hey, look, I've always been a little hard on Dylan White. Yeah, he's big and he can punch, um, but he's de definitely, definitely beatable. And, and he was looking good the first two rounds. In the third round, he picked it up. He started to really hurt him to the body. And he carried that momentum into the fourth round where he dropped Povetkin twice. Um, it looked like the fight was over. Um, it looked like, Pavekin was in a world of trouble. And, and, I, and I wanted to note, um, Dillian White did not pick up the pressure. I think he could have got him out if he would if he would have went for it uh, because Pavekin was hurt, especially the second time. Now, now when Pavekin got back up, there were only about 10 seconds left in the round. But Dillian White could have bum-rushed him because I'm telling you, Pavekin was hurt. Um, Pavekin was, was definitely hurt with that second knockdown. And, and I, I feel like White let him slide. White let him off the hook. Um, he That was a mistake he instantly regret. Um, Povetkin came out and did one perfect uppercut and ended the night. Check out on Fight Post as well as 3D Boxing. Alexander Povetkin is our fighter of the week. Um, if you go to fightpost.uk or 3dboxingblog.com, uh, you can see our fighter of the week is Alexander Povetkin based on that knockout. And Povetkin, I mean, this was, this was a perfectly placed uppercut that about took White's head off. And it put Povetkin back in the heavyweight picture. Uh, Povetkin had some... You know, he had the draw at Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter is a fringe contender who's never going to win a belt or anything like that. Um, he had a, 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 a lack of a, a, a win, you know, against Yui Fury, but not didn't look spectacular. And then he lost to Joshua. That's really all he's had in the last couple of years. Uh, a loss against Dillian White basically would have ended it for him, uh, at least at, a, a, at him being mentioned in the top 10 to 15 heavyweights. 
And we certainly looked like we were on that path. And then lightning struck. And then he landed the uppercut. And, and now, look, the old saying in boxing is, if you not, if I knock you out once, I'll do it again in the rematch, only this time quicker. But Becky could knock him out again. But let, let's keep that in perspective. <laughs> Dillian White was just moments away from what it looked like from knocking him out. Um, I don't think if they have a rematch that uh, White, if he does get him hard, if he does knock him out, he's going to let him off the hook like that. Um, because he let him off the hook, uh, simple and plain. But it was a, it was, it, it, was, it was a good heavyweight scrap. And poor Dillian White, um, Dillian White has been the number one contender for the WBC, which is Tyson Fury's belt for a thousand days, um, over a thousand days. He never got his number called. He's waiting three years to get his, his number called to get a mandatory. Has not gotten it. Uh, He's fought everybody. I mean, this guy's Chisora, uh, Parker. I mean, Lucas Brown. He's fought so many good fighters. And he was long overdue for a, a world title fight. You know, this was a world title shot. This was a crime in Italy. Um, I, I think he should have left Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn to have AJ in his stable and not to get his guy, Dillian White, a title shot against the guy in his own stable. Is, 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 it's a crime in Italy. It's unspeakable, right? It, 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 it's It's... It's ineptness. I, mean, I don't know what Eddie's doing. We make the fight. It's it's in your own stable, and he just didn't do it. Um, and now White's got to go back to Drumboy. He doesn't have to go back that far though, because he does have a mandatory rematch, which is looked exercise in December. Um, so we should get the White Pavekin rematch in December. Um, look, Pavekin guaranteed him another big money fight. He extends his career. He's forty, almost forty-one years old. So he'll get one more money. If he wins it again, if Prebecca wins again, he's going to be right back in the title picture. And why you can't blame him. If he's got two victories over Dylan, Dylan White, he, look, he's the number four or five heavyweight in the world. He's right back there uh, where he was, you know, in 2012 and 2015 and such. Uh, but he's back. Uh, and no one really was expecting that. Um, and I want to get back to Dylan White. Dylan White is defensively sloppy and flawed, which is why this. Well, he did look better. He looked better through four rounds. But that was my point to, to, the, uh, to the hipster. Like, Pavekin can crack. Simple and plain. The last thing that ever goes with a puncher is his power, especially heavyweight. He's going to be able to punch. You know, George Foreman was able to punch until he was 50 years old, all right? The last thing that's going to go is Pavekin's power, and, and you saw that. So, you know, when you have a defensively sloppy fighter like um, – um, Dillian White, it, it's it's never out of the question, and that's all I was saying. And then uh, you saw Pavekin do what he did. Um, now, in the rematch, I, I'm still leaning towards White. I still think White will beat him because White was having his way with him. Uh, White was dominating more than I even thought he would because Pavekin was competitive with AJ, uh, winning rounds with AJ before he got stopped. Um, White was basically whitewashing him. I mean, White, White was having his way with him, dropping him twice, dominating one every round, was out jabbing him. Um, then broke him, started breaking him down to the body. It looked like he had him in a world trouble, and then he got knocked out. Right? It's just that's him. It was just over that quickly. Um, but we'll get, we'll likely get this again in December. Um, you know, Eddie Hearn and Dillian White have both seem to say that they're going to exercise this immediately. So, look, good news for White fans. We'll get White Pavek in again at the end of the year, and I, I do think White will win. Uh, going to the light heavyweight division. Oh, what a fight that was! Joe Smith Jr. does it again. Uh, Joe Smith Jr. Um, has, <laughs> I mean, been absolutely amazing. Um, his performance uh, was, was perfect. I mean, he's got two A-plus performances this year. Once against Jesse Hart in a fight that most picked him to lose, and then a fight against Alvarez, which was more 50-50, although I think Smith was still a slight underdog. You guys can fact check me on that. Uh, but Joe Smith dominated this beast. This guy knocks over trees for a living. You can see that. Like you can see how strong he's. He's just a a a, a physical. He, he's sort. Uh, he he's sort of the of the light heavyweight division. Like, this guy is going to be a problem. And I, if you can move like um, the ball and you circle, 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 you you can beat him. You know, um, Joe Smith's still going to have slow white guy problems at the end of the day, right? He's not a super athlete. He's not fast. But his boxing skills, Jerry Cop Bianco has done an excellent job with him. Really, I mean, an excellent job with him. He, he's maximized his talent the way that Brian McIntyre has, uh, Bo Mac has, has uh, maximized Jamel Herring's talent. He's gotten the absolute most out of him. And, and um, Joe Smith now, I mean, you may say he's the third best 
heavyweight in the division. He's right there. Um, really good stuff. Now, Pavekin's going to fight. Uh, I mean, Pavekin. Joe Smith Jr. Uh, is going to fight for a world title. Um, I don't think a year ago, many people would have thought Joe Smith Jr. would be ever be a world champion. He'd be a fun fighter. Uh, he'd have a, a loyal, small, loyal fan base. Um, but no one ever really thought he'd be a world champion. Well, he's going to have a real good chance at that. Uh, he's going to fight the winner of Umar Salamov against Maxim. <laughs> These Eastern European names. Uh, Umar Salamov and, and Maxim Valashov. Am I saying that right? He's going to fight the Vlashov. He's going to fight the winner uh, of that. And, and either uh, Salamov or Maxim Vlashov are world beaters. Um, if Joe Smith can handle Hart and, and Alvarez, he should be able to handle these two. But it, it'll be a fun fight no matter who he fights. Um, but Joe Smith, um, if the 2020 ended right now, he wouldn't only be fighter of the year, but he'd be most improved fighter of the year. Um, I, I thought he looked good against Bavol and losing almost in a round. He, he almost stopped Bavol there. I think it was the 10th and the 11th. He had him in a world of trouble. Um, he, if there were 10 seconds left in that 10 rounds, in that 10th round, uh, Joe Smith beats him. Right? Joe Smith clocked him right at the belt. Literally. The bell, and then in the eleventh, uh, Bavol just held on for dear life. Um, and the twelfth, Bavol came back and, and took control of the fight again and, and won a wide decision, which he deserves. Uh, probably a little wider than it should have been, but I thought Joe Smith kind of well for him in that fight. I think he showed he was a top ten to twelve uh, light heavyweight, and, and now he's a top three light heavyweight potential, top three to five. He's that good. I mean, he's he's still a step below uh, Bavol and Better Beef, but he's right there with anybody else. Uh, I still think at some point we get Joe Smith Jr. When Joe Smith Jr. gets a belt, Joe Smith Jr. versus Canelo uh, on uh, St. Patrick's Day, Madison Square Garden. Think about that. I should be a promoter. I should work in promotions. There's a can't miss. Uh, but Smith has really come on. Um, and now we're looking at Joe Smith as potentially knockout of the year, fighter of the year, most improved fighter of the year, and a world champion. Kids come a long way. Uh, for, for someone who didn't look like he had a world of talent, didn't have uh, a deep pedigree, got knocked out real early in his um, got knocked out real early in his professional career. Um, we, I don't think anyone saw Joe Smith becoming a, a, a light heavyweight champ. He's on the verge now, and he should likely get that, uh, barring you know a major upset. Um, Joe Smith looks for real. So the uh, everyday man from uh, working class Long Island is about to be. Um, a world champion with, uh, you know, one more fight standing in the way of that, which, you know, he should win. Uh, but let me know what you think. Um, and let me know what knockout you like better. Um, give me your thoughts on both Joe Smith Jr. Joe Smith Jr.'s knockout and Pavekin's knockout, what it means to the division, what it means for their career. Uh, leave your thoughts, comment below. Please, 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 please remember to like and subscribe. Hit the share button. Share this on all forms of social media. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.